transform your thoughts today. I want you to think of gardening and anything involved with the land as life, right? How, how, what you eat matters to you. My dad lives with me now, he has all kinds, he has diabetes. My mother died from diabetes, my grandma died from diabetes, my grandfather died from diabetes. So I come from a diabetes family. I don't have diabetes, my little sister has diabetes, my brother has diabetes. The difference is, I understand food to be life, right? So, because I watched my grandmother. So I want you to think of uh, you taking control of your life and think of gardening and planting in the land as part of you owning yourself, right? In Chicago, when I go out of place, you know, Chicago's so gangster, that's what we know for, all right? We know for being uh, aggressive and gangster. If you gangster, you own yourself. That's what it is, isn't it? You're in charge of yourself. Nobody runs you. That's what gardening is. That's what I've been around the world. I just went to Liberia in December, and Liberia it's very poor. Liberia, Liberia has people who came, uh, you know, were enslaved, and then they left America and went back, back to Liberia. Liberia is a, a country in, on the continent of Africa, right? Liberia. It's a bunch of extreme, it's very, very poor and very, very rich. Reminds me kind of like the United States a little bit. I went and stayed with both of those people. You know, very poor, very rich. What I know is around the world, people are struggling just to eat right people if you try to be have a sense of self like you're in charge of yourself you're not going to just do what people say then people try to hurt you by taking away your resources if you don't know how to plant something something or what to eat then how do you stay alive so we all lately there's a lot of talk about revolution how can you have a revolution if you can't feed yourself when you run away from people or you're in a war and you end up in an outlying area and you can't produce some kind of food, you can't feed yourself. So today, I want us to talk about food as a tool for revolution, right? Talk about gardening as a tool for revolution, as a tool for us gangstering up, owning ourselves, right? We have y'all from Chicago? Everybody from Chicago, so that ain't an alarming term. Gangstering up, you know, owning yourself. Uh, in Chicago. So I want us to talk about how each of you to talk about how being involved with planting gives you a sense of self or what does it do for your life? How does it make you solid? In some yeah, as you was talking I started to think about um, the story. Um, I don't look that old but I was consider myself an old school. And there was a young woman, she was 72 and she had a stroke. And the first thing that came to her was to plant herself in the garden. And so she, her partner took her to her backyard, put her hands and her feet in the soil. And for it, she didn't go to the hospital and she didn't take any medicines. But every day she was in that soil. And that soil healed her from her stroke. That was a garden that gave her life back without her having to be, uh, uh, what is it? limited for the rest of her life. So to be able to connect with the soil, to be able to connect your body to the soil, and understand that whatever you put in, in there also communicates with you. And that, when I thought on what you shared that story with me, I'm just like, yes, that's the, right there, to be able to um, trust in yourself without even knowing what the soil can do. And so um, that's, that's a little bit of the reason to reconnect to the soil um, when it comes to our health and well-being, when we get in, in tune with how to take care of ourselves and what herbs we may need to plant into the garden, um, that means you're actually being in tune and not going to the hospital and trusting somebody else outside of you to give you the directives to what to do for you. And I, I get it. I'm, I'm not trying to you know, convert anyone to not going to the hospital or to the doctors, but to make sure that you're in, in tune that when you grow something, What's going on with your body and what the soil can give you. Personally, if I don't say anything else, I just want to be some very practical tips. Um, first of all, food is weaponized, and it's more so in our community. It is important to be aware of what's happening. 
I understand the difficulty of changing one's habits. Uh, last year, around the summertime, because my father owns a company called Detox International, and uh, he hasn't had a cold in over 50 years. Um, so I, if you want to know more information about it practically, most of our clients, I have clients with herpes, AIDS, cancer, hypertension, diabetes, whole bodies from fibroid tumors, because the body itself, when in a state of rest, will heal itself with a proper nutrition. So we do nutritional fasting. So I started with just taking the herbs every day for myself because I just wanted to be more aware of my consumption. So I do a lot of intermittent fasting, but I've been doing that for years. So my sort of like uh, ability to, the capacity to hold a lot of food, I just don't really have a desire sometimes. But that started changing because I had bad, a bad relationship with food. And what that meant was it's not so much about eating a lot of it. It's just that food became, was a comfort because uh, I suffer with depression and like suicide and things of that nature. So for me, food was a way to sort of create a internal sense of control. So mostly like sweets and things of that nature. I didn't like my relationship with food, and I knew that I had to change some things. Not because I had a diagnosis or anything. I knew that a diagnosis would be inevitable because there is no way that you can continue to eat heralds and sharks and all this food. And just from a practical perspective, that the body is like a car. If you put sugar in the tank of a car, it's not going to drive. It's going to damage it. So the body needs certain minerals in the soil, which is why... Uh, even with water, you can be dehydrated because the water is coming through pipes. It's not flowing through rivers. It's not flowing through rocks. It's not getting the minerals that the body needs in order to sustain itself. So anytime there is a virus or a disease in the body, it's simply the body's way of responding and letting you know that it's not getting what it needs. Cancer can only exist in an acidic environment. If you, through nutritional fasting, Meaning that you began to develop a habit of just of just uh, restraining yourself from certain desires. Like if you know you drink pop every day. So not beating your head over the bush to feel like you got to become vegan. Not necessarily even vegan is going to be healthy if it's not raw vegan. Because vegan, it, it, there's still things that can be unhealthy in that regard. So green juice, I started in... Um, I started in... Uh, I think September, October, where I just started green juice, and I didn't buy myself a juicer at first because I just wanted to build a relationship of consistency. So if you just with parsley, cucumber, kale, and celery, those four things, you can green juice. And the juice, you don't want to keep it more than four days. But um, if you ever need the recipe, you can find me on Facebook, Pearl uh, Ramsey. Um, you can ask some other um, yoga uh, for information um, if you want to. But that recipe I can uh, send to you as well. But just those four ingredients, green juicing. Green is just the sun. It's just chlorophyll. It's just chlorophyll. Uh, so basically, those things are absolutely important. You can change your entire uh, biological trajectory in terms of the way that um, certain diseases flow in your family because it's all you're more predisposed to certain illnesses based on the the body's uh, al alkaline lack of alkaline levels in the acidic environment. So it's very practical sometimes, and that's one reason why with the medical institution, the way they're addressing it, it's only three things that they do: they diagnose, they medicate, and they cut. It's not a system designed for healing. It is a system designed for profit. Yes. And that is why the medical institution continues to do all of this research when they know practically that the land can heal you. You don't have to have radiation and chemotherapy. My point is, whatever you choose to do, it is your choice. But there are alternative methods for healing. And the body will heal itself in a state of rest through nutritional fasting. And this I know through MRIs and having can uh, patients with uh, brain cancer and lung cancer and sending us there before 
MRIs, imaging, and afterwards, and seeing the cancer and the, uh, the tumor shrink. So it's done through these remedies. Changing your diet absolutely will change your health, period. You can do it. So gardening is not just about, um, it's returning back to the soil. We've created a culture intentionally through um, codependency. So through microwaving ovens and through fast food, what it does, it creates a dependency psychologically for you depend upon someone else to tell you about yourself. So you dumb down and you numb down your own intelligent DNA that tells you something is wrong. You don't have to wait to go to a doctor. Your body, when you're in tune with it, when you allow yourself to step away from the, the, the news feeds and everybody else's information to, to uh, inform you about your connection to your own existence, you are intelligent enough to know when something is wrong. And you can change the trajectory, but it does absolutely take discipline because then there is no peel for the lack of will. Hmm. Right. Well, me, I think I'm going to go back to when I heard Mama say revolution. And I said, let me look up this definition real quick instead of just giving y'all what I think it is or what I say it is. So. The definition says revolution, a forcible overturn of a government or social order in favor of a new system. And so I'm thinking about the work that it is that I do and that my family does. And so um, in placing that, well, let me back up. So if you're talking about revolution, right, and you're saying that there is something that you want to change, you have to build the institutions that they, you have to start building those things now. You can't just out of the blue, okay, let's just overthrow the government and everything gets thrown away. You have to start building those institutions. And some of those things I ended up learning from other elders. And one place that it is that I um, had went to some conferences years ago and built some of the elders was CB, which is the Council of Independent Black Institutions. And one of the things that they had taught was the six levels of uh, nation building. So those levels are food, clothing, shelter, slash housing, education, defense, and health care. These are the minimum things that they feel that you need in order, institutions that you need to start building in order to, um, if you're going to have a revolution or if you're going to rebuild society. These are the things that you need to be focused in on. These are the things you need to be independent on. So with me, one of the th when I looked at these, I was like, okay, where do I want to focus in on? Um, after I had my, well, before I had my children, but definitely after I had my children. And the big thing for me was food. Because I was like, if something happens, something go down, I don't want to see my children starving. So I want to be able to control that mechanism. I have my foot in almost every part of this. I can't really think of anything that I'm not really doing, maybe not building my own shelter yet. I'm working on it though. But almost everywhere, I even homeschool my children. So, you know, so, and they learn self-defense and we try to make our own clothes, even though I don't even have nothing on today. But the whole point is, is you have to start thinking about those things and you have to start building it now. You can't talk about what you want to do and you haven't even started trying to put plans in place. So if there are people that you know um, that want to come together or people, organizations that are already doing this work, you want to join those folks the best that you can and try to work together. Um, because that's the only way we're going to be able to free ourselves. If, they control your food. You, if your food is controlled by someone else, that means they get to decide whether or not you live or die. And that decision, I was like, hey, we, we gangster, right? We from Chicago, don't nobody run me. Well, yeah, they do run you. You go to the grocery store. If there is an emergency right now, most grocery stores only have food for three days. Three days worth of food. And I can tell you, it can get pretty bad. I was living in St. Louis and we had a big water main break. I went to the grocery store. I have my own story. 
went to the grocery store to get some water. My husband was trying to save our stuff. Well, as the water is coming in, and he's like, look, we need water, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, I will go to the store. I am, shoot, I think I was probably like seven or eight months pregnant, and I went to the store to get water. People were hoarding the water. Hoard. Food just flying off the shelves. I'm like, man, I thought we had three days. This is my survival training. No. It was stuff flying off the shelves, people hoarding, and had carts of water. They saw I was pregnant. I'm like, man, you're not going to give a pregnant lady water? They're like, no. And the only reason why I got water is an employee came out with more. But everybody else was like, I don't care if you're pregnant. They, got it. they didn't care about that. So you want to be able to have those things in place, whatever it is. Think about these six levels if it's not food. But food for me was the big thing is this is what I want to contribute to not only my family, but eventually it stretched out to the community. This is what I want for my people. I want us to be able to be food sovereign. I want us to be able to feed ourselves. I don't want to have to depend on anyone else for that. And then that even goes further with the seeds. So, I mean, I'm going down a dang old rabbit hole, right? So maybe I better leave it at that, but just I just want to put that in your mind, whether it's growing the food or anything else. You want to think about what is it that is controlled and that if you intend to really free our people, what are the institutions that you are willing to build? What are the connections that you are willing to do with people? Because you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. You have to do it with other people. Okay? And I have this cute little video to show you people I'm working with and I'm like, well, whatever. You know, technology. And I'm going to leave it at that. Uh -uh. Okay. So, I answer the question because yeah, I was trying. Absolutely, absolutely. Great information. So, do you remind us that nobody's coming to save you? That things get tight? Nobody's coming to save you. Pregnant woman in the store, they like, work it out yourself. <laughs> then, anybody know who, got, who Nipsey, Hussle, Nipsey Hussle was? Raise your hand. You know that he was uh, into studying and uh, everything with uh, Dr. Sebi, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so a lot of the things that you mentioned were just some general things. It's not that difficult. Dick Gregory used to talk about it, Dr. Sebi talked about inflammation and that being the source. So we heard that kind of story. And then the mother putting her hands and feet back in the, in the dirt, right? In the land, in the ground, that's where we come from. I'm curious to know from you all, uh, what I put down, put, no. Oh, anybody scared of the coronavirus? You worried about that? The, the virus? No. No, y'all not worried about it? Okay, we well, should be a little bit concerned. Not worried. I know we can't say we're scared of nothing, but you got to be a little concerned about the virus. Well, uh, I saw a presentation the other day, and I, it said that the, the doctor said that having a strong immune system helps. So when we see the deaths from the coronavirus, a lot of it is people who already have compromised immune systems. Having a strong immune system comes from the food, the food you eat, right? The food you eat. And so I'm curious to know, though, I'm watching everybody. I like to have substantive conversations, like with my students. So I'm curious to know if any of this is resonating with you all. Like, do you all have particular concerns or particular thoughts or ideas about gardening and farming and all of this does it sound too far removed like you're too busy with little access you feel or what who's who's courageous enough to say something anybody do you have any thoughts about it yes ma'am okay. i just feel like serving chicken number i feel like listening to everybody's stories 107 so many people that are No better than growing your own. I mean, I didn't put that piece in there because I was stuck, kind of stuck to the revolution. But I mean, if you're thinking about the foods that's in the store, a lot of times you really don't know where it's coming from. You don't know what they put in it. You know, they can be telling you that it's organic, but you know, the FDA has their own standards of what organic is, and it may not be acceptable to you. But when you're growing it yourself, you know exactly what you put in it. You know what soil it is that you have. If you tested your soil, you know that too, you know all of that information, and then you can also build upon that and make your food a lot more nutritious. 
And so um, it is something I was going else I was gonna say to that. Mm. Man, yeah. You know. Um, I'm an urban farmer. I work with Safi and we've been working together like seven years plus. Well, we come from the same club. Um, as far as illness is concerned, I have juvenile onset diabetes. So I caught it when I was nine. My oldest brother caught it the year before I did, when he was 18. So being able to grow my own food, my own medicine, I have my own chickens, 11 of them. I grow plants in my bathroom. I'm growing sweet potatoes in my bathroom right now. I grow my own marijuana. Medically, I'm not a weed head. I have to do it. I have to do it for my health. I'm not 100% sustainable because I live in Chicago. It's really not ideal, but yet it is ideal for us to be able to do this because they are not coming for us. They're not coming for us now. They're definitely not going to come for us when stuff is the fan. And I'm not saying that you should be like hump, like hitting the ground like we do, but you should be doing a little bit of something. Something. Every little bit counts. It's a drop in the bucket, but eventually that's going to turn into a river. Mm -hmm. And your mindset is what is important. So despite all the static and the drama and you know all the negativity going on outside of us, it's what's in with you. It starts at home. It starts with you. And changing your mind and being open to listening to elders and um, like connecting, being a Sankofa baby, going back to you know what your ancestors did so you can go forward in the future is a really important thing because food is medicine, it is health, it is like it is it is life. Absolutely. It literally is life, and everything that your grandma and them did is what they did. Everybody's ancestor, everybody is why you're here right now. If you have this fall on your ears right now, it's not a coincidence, it's very divine. They ask for you to come back. They ask for you to do something. I believe that. <laughs> Let me say this too. You ought to start with something small. Like for my children, I have a son, he's 30. My daughter's uh, 22, she'll be 23 next month. But you can start with something small. So for them, when they moved out to, like when my daughter went to college, I gave her uh, an aloe vera plant that I bought like all oh, some little aloe vera plant. And you know, and she sat in the window, but she's used to using aloe vera. Like you go to the store and you yes. get a scratch or something, you get, um, you pay $10 for something that has aloe vera in it. You could just get your little cheap aloe vera plant, yeah. grow it, and then it, you, you know, like in the movies, how they had a miracle drug for the superhero. Like you get hurt, you put something on it, and it heals right fast. That's what aloe vera does. My dad, you know, if he gets a uh, diaper rash occasionally, they have all these expensive creams. I go right to the aloe vera plant, get, the, get a plant, cut that plant off, put on. I promise, it amazes the doctors. They're like, what, you know, how, how did, what happened? You know, they plan for the wound care doctor to come out here, he gets boils, you know, if his blood doesn't circulate well. I could give uh, the caretaker, I'm like, here, put this on. Put this aloe vera on, it heals right up. It's natural. When I was in Cuba, we were walking through this uh, foresty area on a tour, and the guy told us, everything you need is in nature. You know, every everything you would need. And then he said, anybody have any kind of ailments with that? I'm like, I got a little sinus allergy kind of thing. He said, okay, he walked over to, broke off a little plant. He said, sniff this. <laughs> and I sniffed it, and it cleared right up. And everybody's like, pass it down, you know. People <laughs> like, hit it, hit it and pass it. <laughs> and I passed it down, and it was it cleared up all of our sciences on the spot. So, what a, a far, uh, pharmacy people know that know that there's something natural, and then they just get, gather it, commodify it, and then charge us excess for it because we don't know. But it's natural things, so you don't have to think of. I know it's. It's interesting, like when you come with something that to save you these days, um, people saying like, oh, that's a hotel, or that person's a hotel, all this and making a joke about it. I find that interesting because you can be, it, it's cool to be in control of yourself. Like I'm saying, care for yourself. So don't, don't, don't let people do this great divide, right? Get this information. You can put a little aloe vera plant in your, if you don't, if you're not gonna even grow all the food, you can put a couple of little things in your house to start off with. And once you see the effects of that, it'll make you wanna do something more. 
right? It'll make you want to do some more. Did you think of what you wanted to say? Yeah. Okay, then I want to talk about this next thing that I heard you all respond to. Because I like to connect with the people. So these people said something about the weed and y'all got fired up. <laughs> okay. Before we go to the weed. <laughs> so I just, um, like how you said, it is like divine intervention because I feel as though, especially people, well, just in general, being in America, it and in certain areas, well, I was just talking about being black. It seems as though it is hard to live a healthy lifestyle. And you know how you said that uh, we are codependent? We very much are. And it's like, I'll say, for instance, and the jewel, I live on 95th and Jeffrey. Most of the organics, I mean, stuff is very expensive, you know, but then I'll go up north and something like this apple that was like, eight dollars here or a bag of pears is like ten dollars you know it's two dollars a dollar so uh, what was i trying to say i'm sorry I'm like all over the place but basically just i know that being an american makes it seem as though you do have to like you said like one of you guys said like start a vegan diet or you just have to go through like this long process in order to be healthy but it's just a simple solution as in just taking control of what you eat so, I mean, I just appreciate to hear it from somebody else because it can seem as though just wanting to be a better you is this whole difficult process. But I mean, the answer is just right beneath our feet. So that's what they yeah. 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 I just wanted to, can I just give them four ingredients? Just repeat after me. Kale. Kale. Cucumber. Cucumber. Celery. Celery. Parsley. parsley. Again, kale. Kale. Cucumber, cucumber, celery, celery parsley. parsley. One more time. Kale, kale cucumber, 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 celery, celery, parsley. One more time. Kale, kale, cucumber, <laughs> cucumber celery, celery, parsley. parsley. Let me hear you. Kale, cucumber, celery, parsley. Will change your life. A friend of mine in Kenya, she made her green juice. She's an insomniac. I was suffering with insomnia uh, as well, thinking I'm just the artist. This is what we do. She, I told her last night, I said, listen, she said, I got my green juice, maybe I'll drink it one. I said, no, drink it tonight. She slept seven hours straight. She hadn't done that in a while. I'm telling you, you are the key to your own healing yeah. and you are the governing yeah. and the president and the Lord of your own soul. Yes. Wow. Kale, cucumber, celery, parsley. Somebody write that's, that down. That's I'm deep. Gonna get that out that's beautiful. beautiful. I don't slam the mic up here. I just want to um, share something. Um, I decided to live off grid. I uh -oh, made that decision wow. back in 2012. Uh -oh. And in living off grid, I learned how to be independent of the system. And so no, um, no, uh, no food stamps. Can you ask, explain a little bit of what off grid is? Oh, uh, off grid um, is separating yourself from um, public life. And so um, with being off grid while on the grid, while well, considering everything that's going on, how am I going to take care of myself and I don't get public assistance or have a job um, or doing whatever in order to sustain myself and be healthy? Um, as soon as you said that, I'm just like, yeah, I know uh, some of me was up in here somewhere. Um, so that's what I mean by off grid is, uh, is to be able to sustain yourself without um, an external piece or have to be uh, worried or depends on an external piece. So, um, with that, I had to ask, of course, the question, how I'm going to take care of myself without public assistance, without um, Medicare, without um, a consistent job, and be healthy. And so what I've learned is how to, I had to learn how to refrigerate food, how to connect with communities, because you can't do this by yourself, not at all, um, especially when living healthy, um, which got me into farming. Being on grid got me right into, well, I'm going to have to learn how to make my own food if I actually want to survive. Um, and uh, ran into an urban, urban farm down the street from me that no do ex did exist until I made the decision to be sustainable. Um, or especially without having money. It's like, man, I don't got money. Can't go to the grocery store, can't get none of that. Yeah, I had to learn how to make food, how to connect with, um, with different communities that grew food, um, how to had to connect with people that understood what to do, even when I didn't. So making sure that you're not alone. So you don't have to worry about it at $8. Um, 
um, so um, it's, it's good to have these um, women up here. So these are resources right here. Right. I know if I'm hungry, they got a garden. Like I, um, but not only that, when I start to get on my own, I start to pay attention to food everywhere. If you've ever been downtown and see those plants that just have sitting there looking pretty, those are cabbages, carrots. I mean, I'm like, look at that food just, just out here looking pretty. It is and, it is and the different herbs. So when you start to pay attention to what food really is, and you're going up into stores seeing things, that are just one more thing, there are particular laws that are in place to separate us from actual food. The, the, prohibition, the prohibition laws that prohibited shrooms, mushrooms, um, weed, and other plants, like um, other healing herbs that were um, prohibited. And therefore, maybe 40 or 50 years ago, had people to think that it was, it's illegal Psychedelic. to be able to just eat herbs off the streets. The things that grow everywhere that heal us and feed us, dandelion, yeah. They call them weeds. Yeah. Um, actually, um, chick weeds. They call them weeds. This stuff feeds us, heals us, but they're being killed because it's illegal to have them. Mm -hmm. Like, dandelion root is horrible. Yeah, hell yeah. Actually, in place of kale, if you can get dandelion root in a green juice, it's more potent than kale. Wow. So it, it's it's interesting that. It, being off grid helped me to see more clearly what was right in front of me. So uh, let's talk about the the, the, the new hobby. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make a comment real quick because okay. I had like two things and I was like, dang it, I can't get in there, I can't get in there. So I want to go back to what the piece that you said about it being difficult and costly. Now. You know, y'all can call me conspiracy theorist. I don't care. Um, yeah, I'm just too old to care anymore, okay, at this point. But I mean, you have to understand that that's for a reason. If you want to be able to tell people what they can and cannot do, you're going to control that. There's a reason why only certain stores are in our community. There's a, you know what I mean? Part of it is money. Like old grocery stores saying, I, I ain't going to get a lot of money from y'all. But the other piece is, is them saying, you know, what can we do to this community to destroy it? If you don't understand that this is our enemy, I mean, historically, this is our enemy, they are after us. If you do not believe that, all you got to do is walk around our community and see how it's being disinvested. And when they decide that, oh, we want to reclaim that community again, like they're trying to do over in Eaglewood, all of a sudden, stuff looks so pretty and brand new. Like, wait a minute, you ain't been over in Eaglewood in like 30 years. Now we got Whole Foods and Starbucks and what, what, what over there? So that just kind of goes back again to, to what I'm saying. Instead of being uh, waiting for somebody to save you, we got to save ourselves, okay? Then the other thing I wanted to just mention real quick, and this is a couple of conversations ago at this point, is with the food, um, being able to grow your own food, you're also building community. One of the things that I learned just having my garden, and I think I mentioned this last year, um, when I first moved in my neighborhood, it's mostly people who have been there that are elders who have been there for a long time. So when I moved there, we were a young family, and they was like, oh my goodness, here's this young couple with these three kids. And you know, usually people kind of have a negative thought about young people, like, oh man, they're about to cause all kinds of problems. The minute I put the garden in the backyard and me and my family is out there working, all of a sudden, people just out of nowhere just came and started talking to us. You know, just, we started building community with the people that are in our neighborhood. So you literally will be building community because everyone eats. Everyone eats. Everybody got a story. They're going to talk to you about it. So they're either going to tell you how their grandma had it or they had one or, you know, whatever. Somebody has a story around food, whether it's the stuff that you're growing, the tomatoes or the greens or them. Like, man, I ain't seen the mustard greens look like that in years. You have to start thinking about those things that's going to build community. Another thing is, is it's also protecting yourself. When you are able to build a community, you all are able to start working together 
to start getting the things done that we need to happen in our community. As long as we're in our, you know, looking at our neighbor next door and we can't even speak to them, as long as we have that, it's going to make it very difficult for us to free ourselves. So this is just one tool, um, you know, not only just feeding yourself, but also a tool in building the community. So that's all I got for that. Also, one quick thought about doability and practicality is um, the truth, you have to learn to cook. You know, you have to learn to cook. You know, you don't have to be a super chef, but you can learn how to cook. Then, then you don't feel like you're missing something. So, for my family, like I said, we the diabetes, diabetes lady family. My whole, the whole side, my mother, the whole side. And so, uh, for that family, if we have family events and you don't have the standards, then you out of order. Like if you don't have some mac and cheese and fried chicken. All the all the things we grew up with, that's love for my family. That's how we love each other, through food, right? My grandmother was a chef and so it's disrespectful if somebody if you have an event at your house and you don't have these delicious foods. So I had to learn how to um just over time trying to stay alive, I had to learn how to kinda doctor stuff up so that people get flavorings they like even in my new thing, and then I couldn't tell them what it was, you know? If, if it's green, it's kind of the giveaway a little bit. <laughs> you have to hide it, you know? Like my mother, uh, years ago, this is, was a small change. I wouldn't even probably do this now, but my mother, I could remember when I first started using ground turkey instead of ground beef in, in her, in the spaghetti. And she would come over, she'd eat it delicious. One year she was, you know, she'd get seconds and stuff. One year she came over and I fixed it and then I said, and I had slipped. She didn't want no green pepper, none of that in her stuff. But I just slipped it in everything. Tried to slip that the little, little veggie stuff in everything. One year she came over and she said something and somebody was saying, by all, you know, that they would cook with ground turkey. She said, I would never eat that. And I said, well, you've been eating it for about a year. She cursed me out. <laughs> she cursed me out real well and said, don't do that. Why would you, you know, she was very angry. But she had been saying it was delicious. You know what I'm saying? So you have to do tricks. My nephews, my sister that eat red vegetables, she said, so she said, they don't eat that. I'm like, they eat this at my house all the time. Just some, like a, a, a stir fry vegetable thing, you know. For breakfast, I put, if you hungry at my house, and you come in and I'm cooking, you smelling something, then I might put some garlic, green peppers, onion, and eggs. And people are like, well, I don't eat that, then I add the cheese for them, and they eat it. Then finally, I go in and wean them off of it, you know. You kind of meet people where they are and ease into it, you know, even for myself, because I, I still have that craving in me because that's what I grew up with. So you have to you have to start somewhere. That's what I guess I'm trying to say. And if you learn how to cook, you'll learn other natural things. Like you could toss some garlic into a lot of stuff. You know, there's a joke now that black people put green peppers and onions in everything, you know, and then put a little garlic in everything. If you put that in there, you're getting this natural thing that's fighting uh, inflammation and stuff in your body. Cam, you want to take that? Hey, Cam. Great, great panel. Uh, I just want to say a little something before I have to go on the subject of, now, most people know me in, as being in the reparations now movement. Ticket and there's a concept that we're um, seeing now in our DNA as a result of the enslavement of our ancestors. It's a concept called transgenerational epigenetics. And what it means is that as a result of the trauma, as well as the diet that was forced upon us during the period of enslavement, that our, a portion of our genes have been altered, yeah. that makes it susceptible that we have in our family diabetes yeah. or heart attacks or strokes or cancer. So all of us in here who are of African descent carry a portion of your gene that was altered from way back when. And we know that we're gonna develop these illnesses as a result of the diet that we have. And so we continue to eat the, what we call, what I call a survival diet. It was called a slave diet in the past. Some of our people refer to it as a slave diet, the soul food we eat today. I consider it was, it was what we needed to eat back then to survive. But we don't need that diet no more. We, we're in a whole different, state of, of reality. We have more choices than we had 200 years ago, 100 years ago, even 
50 years ago. We have more choices. So if we want to keep from having early heart attacks, early strokes, early kidney disease, all these cancers, we got to be serious about our diets, about the food we take. How many people in here have on their stove a pot of dirty grease? Recooked. I'm not gonna say dirty because nobody wants that. To, but who has on a container of, of, of cooked oil? They don't do it no more. That's what, that used to be. That used to be. I still see it in a lot of my tenants' apartments. I still see it. They have two and three containers of, of cooked grease. Once you fry with oil, throw it away. The second you use it again, it's cancer causing. But that's something we we passed down generationally in our family. I remember as a child, we had those Crisco containers yeah. of this this cooked oil over and over and over again. And so these are things that we've inherited that we use to survive off of. We no longer use those. If we want to survive now, we have to listen to these people on this on this panel. Thank you. Can I just add on to what you said, Barbara Cam? Because Thanks. I'm glad that you're jogging my memory up here. Because sometimes I say some stuff. And then I forget to add, this is why I do what I do. And the epigenetics just reminded me of why. Because in the beginning, when I introduced myself, I mentioned that I grow foods from the African-American Southern tradition and the African diaspora. And the reason why I started growing some of those foods from the African diaspora is, one, for us to reconnect ourselves with ourselves. But some of us don't know we African, all right? to reconnect ourselves with ourselves. But the other thing was is that I actually had read a uh, study that talked about when they put African-Americans on the continental African diet, the problems that we were having started to reverse. And that's mainly because their diet there, and I know because I've lived there for about 10 months, um, their diet is mostly vegetables. There is meat. There is some fish in there, especially where we were living, the people, the Atlantic, I mean, the whole ocean was right there, so they could just go fish. Right. But it was mainly vegetables, because people were like, how were you able to eat in Ghana and you're vegan? Like, how were you able to do that? You didn't eat any meat? I'm like, do you know where I was? I'm on the continent. Our people eat mostly vegetables. So all I had to do was just say, don't put fish in mine, or don't put lamb, or whatever the heck, you know, you got it. Just don't put it in there. They didn't have a problem with it. They got it easily, where it's kind of difficult here when you're talking to folks. So I just wanted to put that out there, is when you are able to control what it is that you're growing, you can also say, look, there's certain things that I know genetically has been linked to better health for my people, and I can grow that, but we can start eating that. So I really wanted to really introduce our people to these foods seem kind of you know strange or out of the way unless you like to eat at different types of restaurants like i have no problem going to um a nigerian restaurant or anything like that but some people you know it's new it's different but i'm just putting that out there i'll just put it that way okay yeah i would just say as much as possible cut out white the white iodized salt and white sugars right. you can replace salt with himalayan salt yeah white flowers uh, if you want salt you just replace it with himalayan salt uh for sugar try to buy the raw cane sugar yep. and okay. you can do stevia that's another thing that's actually was banned until what 10 years ago or something like that so they actually banned it. The sugar companies got together and was like, man, this doesn't cause high blood pressure and blah, 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 blah. We got to get rid of that. We're not going to make no money. I read something bad about that. I had that. It don't taste that good. And I read something bad about it. I read that it's called cancer. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So, yeah. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. So let me say this uh, uh, right fast, too, about the trauma thing that Cam talked about. You know, um, we, we live in these environments where you don't want nobody dry. I don't want nobody dry next to me because I don't know if you're a shooter. We duck and dodge and bugs and all this stuff right in here. It's like a war zone. Trauma, um, it was taught to me that trauma does, like your receptor, your cells are supposed to be like this. Trauma does this to them. So you walk around, you know, you feel anxiety and balled up because your cells are actually in fight mode, in fight mode. And oftentimes we're born in fight mode like that, where your cells go through, this is healthy, 
and instead yours like you know like this crunched up fight and fight mode. Well, uh, one uh, doctor explained it to me. It's like a war. If your body is fighting on so many different fronts, that's why your immune system is weakened, right? So if you're dealing with trauma of dodging bullets and working your way home from school, and then you also, if your body, your body is like a, like an army. So on this front, it's, it's psychologically dealing with getting to someplace safe. Now, if the food is another war your body has to fight, you see how you're in compromise mode because you're trying to fight this bad food. Your body is trying to keep you alive. When you're young, it's easier. As you age, it, and it's coming younger and younger on people. So your body is trying to fight this food, trying to fight this uh, fear of you know something happening to you. It's fighting too many fronts, trying to fight, get your homework done, worrying about succeeding. It's a lot. So the best you can do to eat, because we can't really control the streets, but the best you can do is try to control your food so your body doesn't have to fight that one. And that's a, it's a, it's, it seems hard, and some of these things are sound. You go in the store, pick it up, it's expensive, but there are some simple things you can do, some simple things you can buy. Like you said, somebody said apple, but let you, who said about apple? Have an apple or something. Yeah, I mean, some simple things you can do to eat a little healthier. There are some things. So now we're going to talk about the weed. Okay. I know they're waiting for me to get to weed. Okay. Right back. Um, I'm so glad you said that. I have, in, the, in addition to having diabetes, juvenile onset, that means that my pancreas doesn't make any insulin. That's different from type 2. I also have something called gastroparesis. It is very painful. I have nausea. I have severe anxiety, panic attacks. It is horrible. I cannot eat corn, I can't eat lentils, I can't eat legumes, I can't eat black eyed peas. My diet has changed like 20 times in the last 30 years. And because I'm on disability, I own my own business, I write about sustainability, I have control over what I can do. The fact, um, like at the end of the season, like we're in the, in the ground like eight months out of the year, at least I am, I've already started. I'll be done in November. But what I do, I make sure that I preserve all my food from the garden season to hold me from November to um, April. Remember last year we had the polar vortex? Government shut down, they weren't going to get us no food stamps. I wasn't really worried. I didn't have to go to the grocery store. I had all my food there waiting for me. I didn't have to, I didn't panic. Because you are in fight or flight mode. And it is, it is exhausting. It is nerve-wracking. I've had insomnia. I've been in the hospital. By 2006 alone, I had 45 admissions to the hospital. And I was tired. I was exhausted. I was tired of other people deciding, people who are not of my culture deciding what is best for me when it really wasn't in my best interest to begin with. They don't have our, they don't have us invested. They do for their profit. It's all about profit. It's all about money. And we've assimilated into that thinking that we got to run with the Joneses. No, you create your own. You have more freedom. Then that way they don't have they, they don't have you on lock. Because you don't need them. You're not giving into the system anymore. So it's very important to be sustainable. It's a lot of work to be a gardener, to be a farmer, to be a, a land steward. It's a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie. It is exhausting. By the time September comes around, I'm done, but I still gotta pull my food out of the ground. But because we have community, I've been rolling with Parfum for a minute too. We rely on each other. I'm, I'm like taking a break this season because um, I'm going to go support my other fellow farmers. I'm still going to have my own, but because I know my body is taxed and I'm mentally taxed, I can, I can go to my sisters or I can go to my brothers. I got elders in Pembroke, farmers, black farmers that live off grid that I can go to. So it is a community thing. You do not have to do it by yourself. I run a business, a peer runs a business, my friend runs an organization. There's a whole plethora of us out here. Baba, who just left, um, Mama, um, she's awesome too, because I know her through Chicago State. It's the, it's the system of us here. So let me, let me say this right, thank you for that. So let me get to the weed right fast. I know y'all want to get to the weed. So, first, I want to say one thing about that. You see how like a lot of the health centers are being replaced by dialysis centers. All in the hood, y'all see that? Where LA Fitness, it used to be a health club going out now it's a kidney center. What? You told so you have to be careful. This is intentional. All these popping up everywhere. So we have to attend to ourselves. Let's get to the weed. So the weed. So my son is 30. I told you. My son went to Morehouse. He's, you know, cool dude. He owns a, um, 
production company. Y'all heard of Wonder Studios, uh, produced Lil' Fo. Y'all know who Lil' Fo is? Any of the young people? Lil' Fo, I want. Lil' Fo, Kia Wonder. Kia Wonder. Because Kia Wonder is the producer, super producer. Him and my son got a company together. Uh, Wanda Studio. So my son, I say all that to say, my son is, is a little different than me. He's in my tradition, but he's a little different than me. In this main way. He's a weed smoker. I am not a weed smoker. I've never smoked weed in my life. And when my son went to Morehouse, came home one year, he, he and I are very close, and he told me he smoked weed. And I said, he, to, he told me that he had smoked weed. And he told me that because he was concerned for his grave was going to be bad, and he know that means problem. So, because <laughs> he had weeded himself away. And so, uh, uh, for me, it was greatly disappointing. My son told me he smoked weed, I cried. Like, oh no, he's a drug addict. <laughs> he like, don't smoke weed. <laughs> you know, your dad, his dad is a, is a Chicago dude, been in the streets, he don't even smoke weed. I'm like, what if you smoke weed? That's a followers thing. You know, you hooked it. You hook now, we can get you in the treatment center. My son, <laughs> my son, my son is like, my son was like, well, I'm not like that, you know, whatever, he tell me about perk, and I'm like, what the world is this stuff? But, let me tell you, he, years ago, I have 10 acres of land up in Michigan that nothing's on. My son told me, well, you should get into, you know, mom, tell me, you should get into cultivating. Then he all bring back all the examples. So and so smoke weed, so and so smoke weed. You know, all the working people who are my friends who smoke weed, you know, to show me that it's not going to, he, he's not on crack, you know. So he, he told me that I should get into cultivating, um, growing, be, I should be a grower. Now look how popular it is, right? Everybody's a grower. I want to say a couple of things about that. Growing, I guess people can grow these specialty strains and they know what it is and all that. But I do still want to say one cautionary mama thing. <laughs> and that is don't let these people fool y'all into weeding it up. Come on now, so we, it's some natural things. The woman just told you some natural things you can take to help put you to sleep, help ease your anxiety. Don't just weed yourself up now. It's cracking me up because people never have come to save us. So you're not bringing weed things to save us. I know you're bringing it to steal our money because it's an underground economy. You know what I'm saying? And now you're coming in swooping in front of it. But it's also it also serves another purpose if you can get everybody just to stay on weed all the time, right? This is not the weed conversation y'all thought it was going to be. See? So be careful. There's some natural things you could take or you could use to help relax you too. But speaking of marijuana, it is a thing now. You still have to be careful because everybody thinks now you're going to grow it in your backyard. That can't happen. You can't grow over a certain amount, right? Anybody know? It's a certain amount because basically it's another way to get you in jail. Watch this traps. It's tricks and traps in there. So they're getting all our money that everybody used to get. You know, all my little cousins used to get. <laughs> they get they're getting everybody money now. They also making people lose focus, right? And then now there's so many new rules because it's still developing. Like you could not smoke outside. You think you smoke in your car. You think you could grow it in your backyard. There are rules to that, right? I should say that marijuana, that's a natural plant. Did y'all know coke is a natural plant? Right? Those are all natural things. So we should also talk about um, in nature about things being, I'll, I'll say, abused. Abused. Because in nature, like cocaine comes from coca plant, that's natural. People still, farmers in some places, poor farmers, chew that to have energy to work for hours and hours a day in that hot sun. So all of these things are natural, but it's still, you have to have limits to it. You understand what I'm saying? You have to limit to it. Y'all want to add anything on the weed conversation? Yeah, so. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging around. We appreciate it. I, trick, I knew it ended at 12 30, so I tricked y'all and got y'all to hang on for the weed thing. Okay? <laughs> but thank you for uh, listening. Uh, it's not over though, right? Or is it? It's not over. So we're going to still talk about, um, if you all have anything to add on the weed thing right fast before they leave. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Or any natural substance that they could take that could help them relax. Any natural plant. You said, could you say what you said again? So we talk on this weed conversation. Uh, so kale, celery, parsley, cucumber. Kale can be replaced with dandelion root, 
avoid white iodized ingredients like salt, sugar, and flowers. And lastly, um, just to provide a little hope in the midst of a, again, genocidal system, is melanin is actually healthy for the body. It feeds the immune system, the brain cells. So in the midst of these spiritual attacks, your very skin has saved you. Wait one second, I want you to tell them what relaxed you for the sleep stuff. We the talking about juices. what did you into the weed. Oh, that, that helps you? That Press. helps you to sleep. Okay, no, there you go. Now serving to get numbers. Okay, that's my app. 100 yeah, I heard that Keyline was pretty good. Death 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 Death. Say that again. I heard, I heard that Keyline was like pretty good like for like brain food and stuff like that. And like pretty good for your body, so would you prefer that too? Well, what I'm going to give you is the four essential green, uh, the green vegetables. Parsley has every vitamin known to man inside of it. Celery is a stalk, it's a root of a vegetable. So sure, I, I encourage you to do your research on, on different things, but in terms of the practicality of things that you can do right now that's accessible, just those four things. And when you juice it, you throw away the pulp. You use two quarts of water. Water as well, there are two particular brands. Unfortunately, they are expensive, but uh, it's intentional. Uh, Starkey water and spring uh, water, uh, they dig two miles into the earth to get it. So Starkey water and uh, Spring Valley, uh, both those particular companies dig two miles into the earth to extract the water. So you're getting all the minerals that you need from that. These are things you can work into, but in the meantime, keep line, Absolutely. Whatever you know that's healthy, do it. It starts with something, but at least with those four things, the four, they're just, it's just liquid sun. And you're going to feed your body and give it an opportunity and you will feel the difference. And just start cutting away certain habits of, you know, when you want to uh, default to a candy bar, three, four, a dollar, all those things. Just put into your memory that you know that it's poison and just start doing things like I started doing. A while back, I just started consulting my body first. The body doesn't need cheesecake. The body, we might want cheesecake, but the body doesn't need it. So start consulting yourself based on essentials for your body. And if something is an essential, even though it's cheap, remember, it, even though ignorance is bliss, you pay for what you don't know. Okay, let me say this too. For brain food, blueberries. Blueberries help. And blueberries. And then you all can go to all these and get these little, you can get, if you don't have time or access to natural things, you can go just get some berries. All uh, the berries help a lot, especially dark berries. Yeah. Antioxidants, for sure. I just oh, want to ask, oh, can you add a little lemon juice to, to curb that taste at least? Hey. Yeah. Uh, if you want to curb the joke to taste uh, for the drink, add fresh squeezed orange juice. Fresh squeezed orange juice. Fresh squeezed orange juice as well as fresh pressed apple juice. So that'll definitely that'll definitely curb the taste. It doesn't taste bad, but in terms of consumption, fresh squeeze, not concentrate, nothing in a box, fresh squeezed orange juice, fresh squeezed apple juice, and you can add a little bit of coconut nectar but as well. What's the easy way to squeeze? What's the easy practical way? Oh, uh, you can buy it. Oh, fresh squeeze. Yeah. Okay. You can buy it, they, they sell it. But we're looking for the cheap place to get it. No, you're not looking for cheap. We're looking for inexpensive. No, listen. Because what I know is people are going to leave and not do it if they can't afford it. I know that what you're saying, but you have to know you're worthy of it. So just like you'll spend $6 for a meal, spend that $5 to get some fresh squeezed orange juice. You're worth it. Okay. Or I was gonna say some of the changes I uh, realized in myself. I switched over to vegan, so when I used to quake the sweets and all these other things that wasn't good for me and was causing inflammation in my joints and everything, um, now I don't quake it as much. If I do want something sweet, I do like the I make like a nut with uh, cocoa and mix it like the you know the dark cocoa, the actual bean, not the and just a little bit of that would just cure um, the, whatever I have in terms of sweets and stuff like that. So my taste did change. Absolutely. What you're craving, and I know this as a sweet person, is fruit. 
Food. Yeah. If you consume food yeah. organic, yeah. do it just yeah. for yourself, organic. Yeah. Do not compromise with your health. Yeah. And, and begin to change your thinking about what is expensive. Mm -hmm. Because what is expensive is when you have to pay for radiation. One radiation treatment could cost $75,000. It's very real. So it is not expensive when it comes to your health. Bottom line, just whatever you gotta do to begin to work on the mindset. Even if you're still doing the same things, just begin to tell yourself, or oh, pray for guidance, I just need some help. I understand it, but absolutely with the fruits. The inflammation is an internal holocaust. Breads. All of that yeast in the body, it doesn't go away. And so what happens, the cancer in the body basically is the body's way of containing, containment. Tumors are just the body creating a mucus and membrane around an area that is not totally oxidated. When the body is not getting oxygen, it creates a tumor. So cancer is actually the body's way to responding and letting you know this is the area that needs attention. Anytime the body is sick, it's telling you it needs attention. And so what you do is you begin to remove anything that grows yeast, like the breads in the body, like the sugars in the body. Those things, your body naturally needs the sugar, it gets it from fruits. It does take time, but just allow yourself a gentle conversation to, of healing where at least you're moving in that direction. Yeah. But if you remove it, there is no way that your body will get sick if it is properly nourished, period. It's not a matter of anything else except for food. Our bodies are breaking down because of food. And I think if you just start somewhere, you will feel better, and then that will be encouragement for you to go a little further, you know? Yes. I just wanted to add a tidbit because you mentioned inflammation, and I have RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis, and um, which a lot of people don't even realize that I have it. Um, but one of the things that I realized that helped me is I found out about the, what they call the nightshade family. So that's your sweet peppers, your hot peppers, your eggplant, um, what am I missing, tomatoes. So things like that. So just look up the Nightshade family. That's just the general name, but the scientific name is Solanaceae. Yeah. So yeah, so you already know that's good because what I found, I don't cut it out because you see I'm a farmer. I still grow my tomatoes and stuff. I make a slamming good tomato jam, you know, that I got to taste in order to sell it. But, um, but what I found is that limiting that has helped me. And then also exercise because I've been to doctors and they was like, oh, if you're hurting, don't do anything. And then when I went to a physical therapist, they was like, why the heck did they tell you that? You need to move. So definitely move your body. And one of the things that I've been doing is since I've been trying to really cut down on that so that I can get rid of some of the swelling, because that's another thing is that you have the swelling in your fingers, but then your face is like you have edema or whatever, like you're holding on to water. Because I started trying to let some of that go and the exercise, I've actually started losing weight. So if anybody was here last year, they'll see I'm a different size. I'm like 20 something pounds smaller than last year because I was like 150 something and now I'm 126 or something like that. So that's a heck of a lot of weight in a year. But it's like she said, your health, my health became very important to me. I was like, look, I gotta do this. I gotta do this for me and I also have to be an example for my children. And I thought I was doing my children uh, a service by, you know, just being, I'm just gonna be mom. No, I was not doing them a good service by being unhealthy. And going to sleep every day, I needed a nap almost every day because of that. And that's what arthritis will do to you. That's part of the process in, in certain foods. So just putting that out there for other folks too. I'm glad you added in exercise. Hey, Sasha. She was one of my junior interns. Exercise because uh, Yoga is a good thing, especially when you talk about oxygen and breathing and stuff like that. Yoga really helps to uh, deliver oxygen to the body. So let me ask yes. for one. Yes. Okay. 
Let's say you, you, you want to wrap it up because we're going to talk more. Okay. All right. If, is there any other, are there any burning questions you all have or anything that you think could help people? Uh, any grounding information? Anything we haven't touched on that you, you'd like to add? Again, just one last thing. Uh, again, kale, parsley, cucumber, celery. You can replace the kale with dandelion root. Nutritional fasting, believe it or not. Just imagine that in terms of a seven week schedule that systemically there's a weekend, right? Even Carter G. Woodson in the process of planting he taught on crop rotation, meaning that you just cannot run the ground and you can't just take minerals from the soil without allowing the time to rest. Right. At least programming your mind so that you eat to live. And I mean, you don't eat to live, you live to eat. Wait, am I no, saying you eat, to live. eat to live, you don't live to eat. <laughs> and the reason why that's important is just begin to program yourself in terms of the way that you're digesting and the way that you're eating, the body needs a break. So most of like our family's clients, um, we've seen them heal from all manners of diagnosis in stage fours, just through nutritional fasting and the herbal and mineral protocol. Can you explain that, nutritional fasting? Nutritional fasting basically is you are subs you're su um, abstaining from any foods and you are basically on a uh, green juice and orange juice hot diet. And with us, we'll have the herbs that my father has a company with that, and he prescribes a particular remedy if you're dealing with something specific. But just for where you are right now, nutritional fasting could be anything from just consuming fruit. A day of the week where you're just gonna eat fruit. Um, like we talked about the berries, those particular things. Breaking it up so if it's every other day. Now sometimes for me, I might go three days without, and I'm just, with my green juice, but just even if you say you're not gonna eat, uh, you're starting to get into the mindset, don't eat after six o'clock. Don't eat after a certain hour so that your body can go into a state of rest and properly digest and eliminate. So with detox, there's just two goals for our particular company that is feed the cells and empty the gut. When you say we're overweight, you're right. over waste. Yes. Weight is nothing but waste. So just imagine your body has accumulated waste. So if waste is there, the body eliminates what it cannot use. And whatever is left in the body is what the body cannot properly break down. So if it cannot be broken down, what happens with nutritional fasting is that it leaves the gut in a state of rest. Because every time you eat, the body and the gut produces enzymes. That's acids because it has to break down the food. So if the body's not having to break down food, what it can do is direct all of the nutrition to the areas that need attention. Yeah. But if the body is constantly working, imagine that you're 98.6 degrees. So that means that the body is working just to maintain energy, to keep the body heated so that it doesn't go into a state, because when your body dies or go into a state of death, the body temperature drops. So your body is always working on your behalf. Right. When you do nutritional fasting, when you put your body in a state of rest, what you do is allow for what is consumed because fruits are easily broken down. Fruits do not require as much energy. Even vegetables require a lot of energy, which is why for the green juice, it is broken down through the juicing process so that you are only absorbing the nutrients. So your body doesn't have to work to break down vegetables. So through nutritional fasting, through the fruit, because it doesn't take a lot of work, because of the soft nature of the particular textures, what the body does is it can directly apply to your body what it needs. What I found with some of our clients who have certain diagnosis, one particular client had herpes, his IgG levels were at 8.9. Herpes was a manufactured disease like coronavirus. Many of these are lab diseases created inside of labs. So what happened with that, what, in his cleansing process of going through fasting, he started coughing up a lot of uh, mucus and things in his chest. 
He wasn't sick. He was getting concerned. I had to walk him through this entire process. He was getting concerned. And I said, what happens is when you're going into a state of healing or regeneration, the body is going to first go to the areas in the greatest amount of crisis. So what it does eliminate. So if there's anything in the body, it's going to, if there's something sitting in the chest, it's going to eliminate it. So in October, his IgG levels were 8.9, and that's the test that they use in order to determine the potency of that particular virus in the body. And so he was concerned, went on a 21-day fast with us, and that was in January. He went to go get tested again. His IgG numbers were down to 2.4. Wow. That is significant. Now, he was still experiencing certain outbreaks. And here's the thing about anything, any disease, when you're coughing, the body's trying to work with you. Right. It's not communicating to you to let you to, to create some sense of fear. Right. The body is eliminating, which is why fever happens. The body is always working to live. Yeah. So what you want to do is give the body everything it needs to assist you in living an optimal life so that your life is not constantly about just surviving. Changing the way you think, I'm sorry, one more. Changing the way you think also has everything to do with how you begin to direct your energies towards the fruition of your dreams. Absolutely. Let me ask you one quick question. You talk. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say something that's really just grounded so I can, because I'm leaving the panel. But um, the main thing that came to me with understanding about urban farming and gardening, of anything with community, is that you are your own authority, you're your own power. Right. But sometimes we don't, we forget how powerful we are. Um, with anything that you're, you're attempting to do, just remember who and what you are. Um, many of the, the ancients and the elders were going to know thyself, and once you get to know thyself and know your own power, it's some things that just come out of you. There's not a teacher, not a preacher, or anyone that can, we can plant the seed, but it's up to you to be able to grow it. So you know who and what you are in, in the possibilities of what you can do based on you understanding your own power. And so be, be in tune with yourself. Um, right. And, and all I can do is, is make sure to remind people that, man, you are freaking powerful. Right. Yes. Um, and, and, yes. And with that, like, with anything. Let's give my hand clap. Okay. We're going to have fun with that Excuse me. Well, the only thing I wanted to add, I have a question. No, I just, I came late, so was there information about uh, your organization yeah. or anything? Yeah, Would there yeah. be information? So, so listen, in, in, include that in your final comments. Maybe a, a, a website or you contact information. I so, okay. um, final information. Honestly, I see cards, but you can find me on Instagram um, under Your Bountiful Harvest Family Farm. Uh, Twitter is YB Harvest. Um, Facebook, just search Your Bountiful Harvest. And uh, and then my website is yourbountifulharvest.com. Okay. Um, the only reason I'm adding this piece to it because it, you saw the elder mama come up and speak to me and I said, well, you know what, maybe I better share this with everybody else. And it was around the nightshade family. And so she was asking like, do I have to remove all of these foods from my diet? And for some people that's probably gonna be a yes. But again, it's about knowing your body. So for me, I have not removed all of those things from my diet. I actually grow that stuff. Peppers, you know, potatoes, um, tomatoes, especially tomatoes. I'm a tomato head, so I always have lots of varieties of tomatoes. Last year, I think I probably had like 10 varieties. So yeah, I'm crazy with tomatoes. So one of the things that I did say is, um, I just said, you want to be able to listen to your body. So if you're, well, the first thing I would do is do what sister said right here, that you would want to do some kind of a detox. Okay, whether you go through somebody, like at the Good Food Center, you have an elder there that does detox. I can't think of her name right now. It's not Where, is that? Where is that? On a 70, I think it's 73rd near Jeffrey, but I forget that street. Oh, yeah, Dang. Okay. You know what? Oh, 73rd near Jeffrey. You remember my mama's name Mama though? Camilla. Mama Camilla. I knew it was a C. Mm -hmm. So Mama Camilla, and I know people who've actually used her, and so she guides you with herbs and everything. But 
if you're able, you know, to just want to read on your own and you don't want to have to necessarily pay someone, you can do a juice fast. That's something that I do for a couple of days. And that usually kind of, keep, like she said, resets your body. Or you can do a raw food fast, like eating salads, and just, again, reset it. And me, when I say raw food salad, I don't mean like smothered and all of that crazy salad dressing. You want to like make your own salad dressing at that point um, that's natural. And that way your body will reset. And then when you try to eat those foods, you will know your limit. Is so there like a source you can give that show tells them how to make their own salad dressing? Uh, I just get a, well, I'm vegan, so I just get a raw food cookbook Okay. and do that. Yeah. But the most simple one is olive oil. YouTube. Oh, yeah, YouTube. YouTube. That's yeah, right. I do do okay. YouTube sometimes too. Um, but the simplest one is, uh, olive oil and um, like apple cider vinegar sometimes uh, you can mix those two together sometimes you add a little sweetener um, but what else was I going to say oh yeah so as you're listening to your body you'll start to find out what your limits are because right now you're so overloaded you can you don't know what your limits are you just eating everything and you're like man everything is bothering me or I don't really know what is bothering me, but when you reset your body and you start to slowly introduce foods back into your diet, you will start to see what you're reacting to. And so, like I said, me, I can still eat the tomatoes, even though it's still causing damage. I know it is. But I can still eat it, but I know it's to a limit. So if I'm eating the tomatoes and then I wake up one morning and my fingers and my toes are kind of swollen, or my face is a little bit puffy. Uh oh, I know Safia stop eating the tomatoes. Right. Don't eat anything else from the knife at Shea family. You need to take a break. And if it's gone too far, then I just do a quick fast and reset. And it, for me, my body, because I've been doing it for some years now, um, it only takes a day or two for my body to kind of reset and eliminate and drink lots of water. Um, and I think that was all I had since she asked me that. Thank you very much. In terms of the dressing that can be made is uh, to soak walnuts overnight and then the next day you can add, uh, for dressing you can add basil and uh, coconut uh, vinegar or coconut uh, amino acid to it, blend it up. And uh, also in terms of a sugar replacement, there's something called monk fruit. And monk fruit is extremely potent. I mean, it's one dab on my tongue, it's potent. Mm. But in terms of an alternative sweetener, monk fruit, these are goals that can be worked towards. In the meantime, uh, unfiltered raw uh, honey. Now my father, he is a fruitarian. He's, he is bionic, so he's just a whole nother level. So he doesn't, but it's, in, it's evident in his body. He has not, he's got not gotten sick in 50 years. Wow. So it's real, a fruit diet and nuts, it would be the direction to go because we've been so removed from the earth. So in terms of a realistic uh, right now to move towards that, but the reality is is that the body is responding to sickness and disease based on diet, period. And if you want to change it, depending on how, how, how bad you want to change your life, it's going to take that sort of, um, that movement in that direction. Fruit, those particular nuts, pine nuts are very healthy, walnuts are very healthy. And moving in that direction, try to sustain and, and try to abstain from um, the white, flowery, uh, the those different things, and uh, manufacture processed foods. Do you have any contact information you'd like to share? Oh, um, my name's Pearl Ramsey. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Mother Yoka Fula. Uh, if you want to, I'm, I'm here. You can ask me afterwards. Okay. Let, let's give a hand. Okay, and let's give a hand for your professor. Give a hand right yes. here. Yes. This is real education. That's what education is not supposed to be just you memorizing dead matter. It's supposed to be life changing and life affirming information that helps you to be be your best self. So we want to thank you. I think my uh, final comments will be. I still I'm still stuck when you said cocoa. When I was in Liberia in December. I went to this guy I met, he owns a cocoa plant. I ate that raw cocoa, it's gross. <laughs> it's bitter. It's very, very, very bitter. Right, so happy.
Okay. So it doesn't taste that. Woo, because that was something else there. But okay, but I want to say just to, um, I would, my final comments, I think I would like for you to understand, as has been said, that you are in charge of yourself, right? And you can start with small changes. You don't have to just radically, unless you want to, radically change your whole life. But any little change is uh, progress, you know? And I think you have to think of the body as like a machine that needs oil, that needs the proper whatever it needs to function. You put that in there, that's what your body is. The body, uh, your body, if you're here, if you walked in here today, then your body has been good to you thus far. But eventually it's going to leave you if you don't treat it right. <laughs> That's my final comment. And my name is uh, Kim L. Dulane. D U L A N E. Why you find me on Facebook? Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank our panelists, uh, Joaquin, who had to leave, uh, Pearl, Black Pearl Ramsey, and uh, Sophia Rashid. Just phenomenal information. You know, um, you can ask yourself, you know, why are we doing this? But when you look at the information that these beautiful queens provided today, there's an understanding that food is political, right? Food is psychological, right? And so that's why we do these things, because they are of importance to us as, you know, living entities, right? And if we want to live a longer, more healthy life, this is the information that we need. And so I'm just so thankful um, to the ladies for coming out and providing us such wonderful information. Please, uh, Sister Sophia, don't forget to pass out your information because I need a card to give to somebody because they're actually trying to uh, establish a garden here at Olive Harvey, okay? So um, they, they wanted your contact information. Okay, and also it was last summer, um, uh, some friends of mine uh, got with Black Pearl and helped her to actualize her dream and that was to create a community garden at uh, 90th and Dolphin. Mm -hmm. And it's there and we were eating off of it and hopefully, you know, this year we can get more people to participate and more people to eat the food, <laughs> okay? Uh, because, because we need that, you know, it's one thing to grow food, but it's another thing to eat it and not watch it go uh, to waste, okay? So I wanna thank everybody, one of my, my scholars who just stayed here anyway, just, serious about the business and the people from the community who came out and um, loved this event, loved it. And so I, I feel thankful for, for that, right? And again, thank everybody for coming out and give our panelists a big old hand again, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate thank you. Thank you. Many, many blessings. Thank you. And thank